So just for fun today, I've chosen five plants that are performing really well for me this month. And each one represents a family or a genus of plants that are extremely collectible and addictive once you start, hence might change your life title. So let's face it, who doesn't love to see plants that are doing really well? It's especially useful to see plants that you might want to try growing yourself. So these will be in reverse order of my favorites right now. It could be different tomorrow, of course. So make sure you stick around to the end to see the plant I'm most in love with right this very day. So let's take a look at my top five performers right now and I'll sneakily squeeze in a few that didn't quite make the cut. Let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, starting with number five. I know I've recently made a video on how great my streptocarpus are doing right now and why I think that is, but I can't leave them off this list because they really do look amazing right now. So if I've got to choose one, it would be this one with the gorgeous yellows. This is streptocarpus motil. Who couldn't love that? As you can see, there are plenty of other strep favorites I could have gone for. And if you think I have a large collection, let me tell you that I've barely scratched the surface in the numbers and varieties of streptocarpus that are currently on the market. And that's just one genus in the family of Jesneriaceae, which contains many more gorgeous flowering plants. The sky really is the limit. So number four is actually an orchid, and it's an orchid I've grown for several years. It's a mounted orchid with long vanda-like roots that didn't bloom for a long time, mainly because I was rather poor at keeping up with the watering. I find plants that need to be soaked in a bucket to be a bit of a hassle, to be honest. That was until I bought one of these pump action sprayers, and that really changed things because I can spray the roots of plants like this very quickly and easily every time I walk past. And I've had blooms on this thing every year ever since. And the six spikes that you can see here shows you how happy it is. It's called Neostylis Lucneri. Sold to me as the blue variety, something I've never quite forgiven spice exotics for on eBay but I still love its many blooms and especially the glorious scent there's much more to orchids than the average non-grower might think although the supermarkets and garden centers might focus on phalaenopsis orchids there are actually over 28,000 species of orchids to choose from, not to mention the many times more hybrids. And once you start collecting, your life will be changed forever. In a good way, of course. So number three is a carnivorous plant, Nepenthes lowii crossed with ventricosa. Now, you know I love Nepenthes, and frankly, I could very easily grow many more if they weren't so expensive to buy in the UK. So if anyone can help me with plant swaps, I'm all ears, especially if you have something with Vici in it. I'm drooling at the very thought. I love this in particular for its resemblance to the species Lowii, which is obviously part of the cross. That hourglass figure and the deep grooves in the teeth around the peristome. It helps enormously that it appears to be an easy and vigorous grower in my conditions, shrugging off the highest temperatures of midsummer and coping admirably with the lowest lows of winter yet it continues to produce these lovely pictures throughout both extremes. The carnivorous plant community used to be quite a niche one, but recently it's reaching a wider audience and no wonder, as these freaks of evolution are endlessly fascinating and very addictive to collect. In fact, if I had to focus on one group alone, I think this would be it. But fortunately, I don't have to. For number two, I'm going to go for a Cyclum and Perscum hybrid, doing really well for me at the moment. Probably nothing special to many people, cheapest chips to buy over here, but I do have the satisfaction of keeping the same plants year after year and watching them increase in size. Mine have really resisted dormancy this year, so it was more of a very long slowdown and a short rest rather than a true dormancy. But the benefit of that is a longer blooming season for me, and who could resist those pink reflex blooms against a backdrop of deep green marble leaves? So as we approach number one, let's take a quick look at those plants that didn't quite make the cut on this occasion. I could have chosen this Begonia longiciliata synonym size Morier with its heavily textured, patterned hurry leaves. Leaves. It's now been moved to the greenhouse, as you can see, and it can cope with really, really low temperatures. And of course, it has a bit more room to grow here with those huge leaves. There is way more to begonias than the rather commonplace bedding plants that we see here in the UK during the summer months. Away from the online world, I've yet to actually meet another person face to face who understands that fact. I could have chosen this Philodendron verucosum with its satiny leaves and colourful unfurling young leaves. 
This is from the Aracy family, also known as Aroids, which has a dedicated and enthusiastic following as any other collectible plant family. I could have chosen this Begonia Maisei F. Nigricans, which has seemed absolutely untroubled by any of the pest attacks or watering issues I've had this year. Or maybe this Tredescantia Multicolored Discolor, one of those love them or hate them plants that one day look fabulous, the next day half dead. Yet despite the rather polarizing effect plants from the Comelinaceae, can't say that, Comelinaceae family has on growers, I think I've got more subscribers from that particular niche than any other. Or maybe this, my current favorite tropical fern, Terris quadriorita with its shades of green and bronzy copper young fronds, sometimes gold in certain light. But instead, I'm gonna go for an unusual choice. In fact, I'm gonna cheat a little and choose a plant that isn't tropical at all. Hope you'll forgive an out and out plant lover. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, and if not, there are links in the description, then you'll have seen pics of these already. My current number one best performing plant is Sorbus pink. Pagoda. It's a mountain ash tree, an almost perfect tree in my estimation. It's got lovely colours on the emerging leaves in spring, plenty of creamy white blooms in summer, followed by the icing on the cake, these dark pink clusters of berries that adorn the branches, but additionally, the leaves turn multiple shades of reds, oranges and yellows before finally dropping off. It hasn't started to turn its leaves just yet, but it'll happen very suddenly and they'll be gone within a week or two. It also prunes really easily because you can prune it right down as low as you like and it'll quickly start to shoot again and it regains its original shape. So as you can see, by growing any of these plants, your life might change, but definitely for the better. At least that's what I think. Your partner might not quite agree. So tell me in the comments your top five best plants for this month and perhaps how growing them started you off down a rabbit hole of collecting. I can see I'm going to be doing quite a lot of Google searches after this one goes live. And if you enjoy the Streptocarpus, you might want to see exactly what you're missing with this recent video over here. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.